Hello everyone, Matt Yasman here. I want to talk to you about the Great Molasses Flood in Boston of 1919. Now it's not exactly the 101st anniversary of it because the Great Molasses Flood happened on January 15th, 1919 and today is January 19th, 2020. So it's 101 years and four days. But even so, it's pretty close to the anniversary. In the Great Molasses Flood, there was a tank of molasses, an industrial tank used to store molasses for fermenting, for producing alcohol. The tank was steel and about 50 feet high and about 90 feet in diameter and located near Commercial Street in the North End in downtown Boston. And that January had had several warm days, as actually this January has, and the tank had been seen for a few days to be making a lot of creaking sounds and shooting rivets out, popping rivets out. Well, lo and behold, the tank erupted on January 15th. The molasses burst forth. And in case you think that molasses, now I brought a prop for the video here. Uh, I brought a jar of molasses and I'm going to tip it on its side. And you can see molasses is viscous stuff. It takes a few seconds to flow and flatten out. And this is, you know, just a quarter of a jar. But if you've got 2 million gallons of molasses, as there was in this tank, and it bursts out, it might be, as this was, a 35 foot high wall of molasses when it started. And it moved quickly enough, maybe it was 30 feet high at the outset. Reports vary. It moved perhaps at 30 or 35 miles an hour at the start, too fast for anyone to outrace it. It swept up people and horses and carts and vehicles and trolleys and buildings because that much molasses moving that quickly, even if it's just two feet deep, is enough to hit a building and carry it off its foundation. Uh, from the physics standpoint, you know, if you stand outside in a wind that's 60 miles an hour, you can walk through that, but you can't cross a stream that's moving, say, 15 miles an hour or even 10 it would sweep you away. Well, molasses is more viscous than water, so at the same speed, it's carrying more momentum and will exert more force on you or on a building. So it swept buildings off its foundation. Uh, 21 people died. Over 150 people were injured by it. And I don't know how many horses were killed. And in addition to all of that, there was extensive property damage. To this day, there are residents who will tell you that when it is especially warm in the summer, you can still smell molasses evaporating from the street, from the cobbles in the area. Whether that's true or not, you should visit and see for yourself. Now, as a patent attorney, I was fascinated by this bit of Boston history because while there's not a whole lot of clear, uh, clear research linking what the tank was with what patents were in effect at the time, there was a fair amount, a fair number of patents already issued for steel storage tanks of the sort that were used. Uh, what you've hopefully seen in the video here are images from patents and photos of the tank that was used. So I've, I've tried to show you a bit of a comparison in those. And uh, if you do visit Boston or have questions about the Great Molasses Flood, uh, please let me know. You can leave me a, a note in the comments. Uh, send me a message. My email is hello at yaspinlaw.com. My phone is 617-340-9295. I'll include a link to the blog post that I wrote about the molasses flood last year at the 100th anniversary. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care.